it's probably going to take us a couple of videos to get through part one of two, but it just reflects how important chapter two is for your exam. Chapter one is a lot of terms, and you'll need to learn them for chapter for the exam and for the homework, and just to be able to progress the course from the terms in chapter one. To show you how important they are, I want you to take a few minutes now to to look up chapter in chapter two, chapter one, wherever you want to go, chapter lecture notes, and rewrite the definitions here one more time. I'm going to let you do that on your own because we've already covered it in a prior video. It's important to cover problems in teaching chapter two and three, I think. It really does highlight um, things a little better, in my opinion. We could talk about the terms. We could just do video um, PowerPoints all day long, which you can do on your own with Learn Smart or reading on your, your book on your own. I don't want to do it that way. I want to work problems and just talk about things as we go through them. So a typical problem and also throughout the course and accounting period, we need to know when we look at an account name such as services revenue or prepaid insurance or buildings, we need to know what it means and what financial statement it goes to. All right, so before we do that, we really need to take time to do two things before we do the, before we identify the financial statements. So first I wanna identify what account type it is. Then I wanna talk about the, what financial statement we're talking about. And then I wanna complete the problem, okay? So first, you may recall this from chapter one. Chapter one um, video. That's the accounting equation. Assets equal liabilities plus equity. And again, you should have taken and paused and rewrote the definitions to these up here. Um, this goes on the balance sheet. I'm fixing to show it to you in just one second. Now, revenue minus expenses equals net income or a net loss if the expenses are more than revenues, right? And that goes on an income statement. So let's take a look at one now. Well, let's look at the income statement first. Revenue, the total of revenues is 6100 Expenses, the total expenses is 2705. Revenue minus expenses is gives us a net income of 3395. If expenses had been a lot more than 2705, in fact, let's say it's, it was on $8,100, then we would have a $2,000 loss. Okay. A balance sheet, again, is the accounting equation. Assets equal liabilities plus equity. Let's look at the numbers. All the assets that are listed here add up to be 42,395. Total liabilities is 9,200. Total equity is 33,195. Add liabilities plus equity and you get 42,395. 42,395 equals 42,395, which is exactly what we want. We want our assets to equal our liabilities plus owner's equity, or equity. All right, so let's go through and identify what account type it is. Asset, um, liability, equity, revenue, or expense. Let's do that first. Obviously, if it says revenue, it is revenue. Payable, anytime you see the word payable, Okay, anytime you see the word payable, that is a liability. Anytime you see the word payable, it is a liability. Receivable. Are you going to, do you work? Have you ever worked? You're going to get paid in a few weeks, maybe next, this week, few days, today, tomorrow, whatever. But you're going to get paid in the future at some point. You're going to get money. You've already worked it. It's just a matter of getting paid. Well, that is like an asset. You're going to have in the future money. You're entitled to it. It's not if you'll get paid, it's when. And because it's, we're, you know, 
because we're obligated to that money, it's an asset. All right. So account receivables is similar. We're obligated. We're going to receive it. It's just a matter of when. So account receivable is an asset. It's, we're going to get paid in the future. Anytime we see the word expense, we know it's an expense. Retained earnings is equity. You might have to memorize that for a little bit until we're more familiar with the terminology as we progress through this chapter. Equipment is an asset. Prepaid insurance. That is an asset also. Um, prepaid insurance. If you guys pay your insurance monthly for your car, that's great. If you pay it once a year for all 12 month, all 12 of the next months, that's awesome too. Um, for those that pay it once a year, you don't have to pay it again by the month, right? And accounting, that's an asset. If you pay it once, you don't have to pay it again for a year. We'll go ahead and treat that as an asset, okay? Buildings, asset. Rental revenue, well, that's obvious, revenue. Dividends or equity. You might, again, until we really get familiar with this chapter, maybe just commit that to memory. Big companies, they buy a lot of office supplies at once, and they may not be all consumed before the end of the accounting period. As such, we treat that as an asset. I'm not even looking at the word in front of expense. I just see the word expense and I just write it down. Okay, common stock equity. I think now we're ready with these rules here. These three go on the balance sheet. So asset liability and equity goes on the balance sheet. Revenue and expenses go on the income statement. Okay, I think we're ready to... Um, Finish the problem. Let's go ahead and I'll create the column. That's good enough. I'll put it there. All right. So, you know, I don't want to put it there. Yeah, to the right. That's where I want it. All right. So, anything with an asset, revenue, I'm sorry, asset liability or equity balance sheet, right? And you're going to see how easy this is to fill out now that we've recognized what account type it is, asset liability or equity. So anytime we see the word, oh, put it on the wrong line. Anytime we see the word asset liability or equity, it's a balance sheet item. It goes on the balance sheet. It goes on the external reporting statement, balance sheet. Liability, asset, there we go. Expense, no, equity, yes, asset, yes, asset, yes, asset, yes. So all four of these are balance sheet items, right? Equity, asset, asset, asset. Revenue, no. Equity, yes. Asset, yes. Expense, no. Expense, no. Equity, yes. Okay. How simple was that? The hard part, you might be saying, is this. And I agree, it's harder. But you'll get good at it. Just keep persevering, keep practicing. Now we know revenue and expenses, they go on the income statement. So let's fill that out. Revenue, income statement. Expense, income statement. Revenue, income statement. Expense, expense, income statement. How about that? We're done. I have a blank. I would encourage you because this is a blank document. Print a sheet um, and redo it. Practice. Preview of things to come, y'all. Trial balance. We want the total of our debits. Debits go on the left. And I'm going to, this is abbreviated, DR, but written out. Debit is spelled D E B E I T. D E B I T. And credit can be abbreviated C R, but written out it is C R E D I T credit. Debit on the left, credit on the right. Yeah, this was a long time ago. I think maybe in uh, right after the Renaissance, accounting was first created. These might be Latin or Italian words. Y'all can look it up. I'm not. I'm thinking. I've always thought that, and I always say I'm gonna look it up. And well, it's been a while since I was in college, and I haven't yet. Anyway, uh, debit and credit. The point is, I think if we were creating an accounting now, we might call it left and right. I really do. I think I, if we're going to stay with the same kind of thinking from 400, 500 years ago when accounting was first created, I'm thinking debit means left and credit means right. Y'all can look it up, but 
And I'm going with it because it makes too much sense. So debit left, credit right. The total of all these debits will equal the total of all the credits. Look, we're so serious about that happening that it, every individual transaction that we've identified and are recording and communicating, there's debits and credits involved in those two, and we want the debit and the credits to equal each other. This is an example. You don't need to know the journal entry yet. This is an example. The building is debited for a million, but we bought the building for a million. Remember the historical cost from chapter one? The contextual framework and historical cost. Well, we paid a $200,000 down or 20% and financed the rest at no payable. Well, 200,000 plus 800,000 is a million. Asset equals um, liabilities and equity, right? So really we have a building for 200,000 and we have 200,000 less in cash or 800,000. And people start thinking it through like that and they get all confused. Don't do it. When you look at a journal entry, there's, there's one thing, mindset you need to have. This debit of a million equals the total of the credits for, for a million. That's, that's your mindset when you're doing a journal entry, okay? Promise me. T accounts. Literally, they're a T. On top, we list the account name. Let's say cash, which is an asset, and then we have a line in the middle. So we have a T, okay? If the normal, wherever the normal balance is, that's how the account is increased. So cash, an asset, all asset accounts are increased with a debit. So the normal balance for an asset account is a debit. Debit's on the left. And then the opposite is true. If a debit increases, a credit decreases. Liabilities. They're on the other side of the equal sign, on the accounting equation, meaning that the credit is the normal balance. So a credit increases a liability account. The normal balance for a liability account is a credit. Now, liability and equity both are on the other side of the equal sign from the asset. So it also has to have a credit balance. It's a normal balance. Credits increase equity. Equity has a normal balance of a credit. Revenue, same thing as equity. Same thing as equity, because it increases equity. Revenue increases equity. Revenue has a credit balance, or credits increase revenue. The normal balance for revenue is a credit. Opposite for expense. Debits increase expense. A normal balance is a debit. Super easy way to remember it, and I had to take a little poetic justice to come up with this mnemonic, so please forgive me. Uh, Addy Clear, A-D-E-C-L-R. I had to, had to take a little poetic justice with the C-L-R. Uh, it, it, trying to use ah doesn't work so well, so Iller. I didn't like Addy Iller. If y'all like it, use it. That's fine. I'm going with Clear. So assets, dividends, and expenses are increased with a debit. CLR, which is investments like common stock, liabilities, and revenue, they're all increased with a credit. Normal balance for Addy, debit. Normal balance for Clear, credit. Debit on the left, credit on the right. Debit on the left, credit on the right. We'll write it out Addy Clear. So these three are debits. These three are credits. Addy Clear. Addy, debit clear credit you can take a blank sheet of paper when you start your test put addy clear write out what it means bam you're good on the test normal balance these three go up with a debit clr these go up with a credit or the balance is increased with a credit all right so i think i'm going to uh stop right here i'll have another video and following this one so this concludes the first part of chapter one part one. This is going to be confusing. Chapter one, part one, video. We'll make another one for part one right after this.